In Washington, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly spoke at the Daily Briefing Thursday. He dismissed reports that he's not happy in his current role. CBS News White House and Senior Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan reports. Uh, unless things change, I'm not um, quitting, I'm not getting fired, and uh, I don't think I'll fire anyone tomorrow. Chief of Staff John Kelly came to the briefing room today to assert there is no chaos in the Trump White House. Despite weeks of controversies, including reports Secretary of State Rex Tillerson referred to the president as a moron, and Bob Corker, a key Republican senator, saying the White House was an adult daycare center and that the president may be leading the country towards World War III. Corker's comments were made publicly, but the president has still blamed the media for his troubles. Today, Kelly channeled his boss. One of his frustrations is you, um, all of you, um, not all of you, but m many of you. He refuted numerous reports that he is unhappy as chief of staff, a job he took over in August in one of the White House's many senior staff shakeups. Well, you guys at the cameras always catch me when I'm thinking hard, and it looks like I'm frustrated and mad. Don't believe your eyes, he said. These tense looking images of him listening to the president at the U.N. and during Mr. Trump's remarks about the Charlottesville violence do not tell the whole story. Kelly said he is focused on instilling order at the White House and not on controlling the president. I was not brought to this job to control anything but the flow of information to our president so that he can make the best decisions. But it was clear Kelly does not always agree with those decisions. Of the president's fiery rhetoric on North Korea, Kelly said he hoped to avoid military conflict. If it grows beyond where it is today, uh, well, let's, let's hope to diplomacy work. Kelly's marching orders were to put a positive spin on working at the Trump White House. Despite his denials, we know that Kelly is fatigued by the president's Twitter habit and his temper. Kelly is a four-star Marine general, and he called this the toughest job he has ever had. Steve? Hey, Margaret. Uh, can you tell us about some of the inconsistencies you saw between Kelly's statements at the briefing and what President Trump has said? Well, I thought it was uh, interesting in terms of both his reference to Puerto Rico and North Korea. Kelly, as to the comment from the president earlier today that Puerto Rico was already a disaster before these hurricanes and said first responders can't be there forever, was interpreted by many to be insensitive or perhaps even his biggest critics called him a racist for describing it that way since he didn't have threats like that against victims in Texas or Florida. But Kelly said, wait a second. This is just uh, first responders can't stay forever by definition. They're only supposed to be there for a temporary period of time. So he was doing a bit of clean up, clean up on that front. But in terms of an actual policy difference, I heard one when it came to North Korea. The president has made very clear, even just yesterday, that he disagrees with a number of his top national security advisors with their approach to that uh, nuclear armed country, saying that he wants a tougher response and that that's his instinct, specifically saying Rex Tillerson and the Secretary of State wasn't strong enough. He even told him to not to waste his time talking or trying to have diplomatic talks. Today, Kelly, a former general, said, no, diplomacy is what we hope works here. And he also pointed out that the State Department needs to be fully funded or they need to buy more bullets. Keep in mind, Trump wants to cut the budget there by 30 percent and has barely filled many of the top positions, more than 300 unmanned. So he also took a shot at the media, saying that uh, we need to get better sources. Uh, I'm guessing by we, he didn't mean you or Major Garrett. Uh, but <laughs> what do you make of uh, what he was uh, saying about the media today? Well, it's interesting to have today the chief of staff. Yesterday, it was the secretary of defense. Last week, it was the secretary of state himself come out. Cabinet member officials who are dealing with literally the biggest problems in the world that come to the president's desk on a daily basis, taking time out of their day to refute what they refer to as gossip and rumors. Why do that? Well, Clearly, it irritates the president, who has tweeted at least seven times in the past seven days about what he calls fake news. Some of this is uh, what they say inaccurate reporting, and perhaps there is some truth to that. Some of this may be just, uh, you know, incessant criticism of the job of the presidency, because you are rarely popular by definition. Not everyone voted for you. You're going to have some critics. They feel, however, that the president is unfairly maligned and not given a clear chance here. And that 
is why uh, Chief of Staff Kelly came to that podium. It was interesting because unprompted, he repeatedly returned to that theme of, well, let me shoot down this uh, report that the president wanted to in increase the nuclear weapons arsenal by tenfold. He said that's false. No one asked him about that. He w went to the stories unprompted to shoot them down. And that is clearly what his mission was, more so than commenting on policy. And uh, Friday, uh, the president's going to announce his decision on the Iran deal. What, uh, what are we going to hear from him on that? This is a monumental decision for uh, President Trump because this will define his approach to how to deal with a future nuclear threat. That's what John Kelly called it today. And what we know is that the president is going to play some domestic politics with that threat. He is going to go to the U.S. Congress and give them the ability to put sanctions on Iran and potentially blow up the nuclear deal. Doing that allows him to say he delivered on a campaign promise to tear it up. He's actually not going to deliver on that because his top national security advisors are telling him, wait a second, keep it in place because it's actually working. U.S. intelligence has convinced the president uh, that he cannot go that far to tear it up, but that he can try to put uh, a new round of diplomacy together to create something that patches up the holes he says exist. That is a tremendous gamble. It is a tremendous gamble, not only because you are dealing with uh, North Korea and an existing nuclear threat there, but because you could potentially not only uh, go to conflict with Iran with this rollout of uh, direct aggressive action to push back against their interference in the Middle East, but also alienate the key allies we need in Europe, Russia, and on China. So this is a very big decision for the president. And tomorrow, when he makes this announcement, a lot of it's going to be focused on the domestic politics of delivering to his base, saying, I fixed it, and this deal he called an embarrassment is now in peril. Margaret Brennan, always great to see you. Thanks.